Hi, I'm Mark from the Microtasker project. Today, I'm going to be taking my 1050 board with its LCD, and I'm going to be showing you how to take an SDK example, or maybe your own code, convert it so that it runs the code um, entirely from the internal RAM so that we get the optimum uh, speed. We're going to encrypt this version and we're going to make it uploadable so that it can be uploaded in the field with a microtasker bootloader. In MCU Expresso, I'm again going to use the EM wind temperature demonstration because it uses the TFT display and also because it gives a bit more credibility than just taking, let's say, a blinky project or so. I'm first opening up the project properties to look at its memory map. Now here we can see its onboard flash. Now we don't actually want to use that in this project because as I said, we want to run it from the internal instruction memory. The internal instruction memory is named ITC. Now what I've done here is that I've bumped up the original 2000, that's 128 kilobytes, and I've made it up three times bigger. Now the reason why I've done that is because I know that this application is about 170 or 180 kilobytes in size. So now we have enough of this to fit the program into. Moving to the settings, there are two things that I've done. First of all, I've disabled the manage link a script file which was generated when I imported this project. The reason for this is that I want to make some changes to the original setup. And finally, as I did for the XIP operational version, I've added this call to an external uh, generate bat file. On my hard drive, this time I've added three files to the root directory of my example projects workspace. As I did with the XIP uh, reference, I've added my generate.bat and my boot header.txt. But this time I've also added a copy of the complete microtasker bootloader for this board. I could have done this for the XIP version as well, but for completeness, I'm doing it this time. Moving to the workspace output directory, I find the linker script files which were generated when I imported this project. The one of interest is this one here, which I'm now going to open and edit. Now the original example will either run the code in XIP RAM or in SD RAM, depending on whether I set that I wanted it to run in RAM or not when I imported the project. So I'm taking this uh, linker script file, which is generated by the managed build, and now I'm going to modify it so that we're going to have the code located in the internal instruction RAM. These are the changes that I need to make. Now my linker script wants to put the code and variables into the SD RAM, so I'm going to do some changes. I'm going to convert these into the internal instruction memory instead. This is the code and the constant data. I'm doing the same for some libraries. ITC can stay where it's at. I don't think that the OC RAM is being used. This I'm moving completely to ITC. The same to this one. DTC, we're going to leave as it is. Here we have the ITC as it is. As I said, I don't think that the OC is being used, so let's just leave that as it is too. The BSS is non initialized uh, zeroed memory, so I'm going to leave that in SDRAM because that doesn't uh, take up any code space anyway. I'm not sure about this one, but let's try putting it in the ITC anyway. We leave the library's heap operating in SDRAM, and I'm also going to leave the stack pointer in SDRAM. Now, that's the end of the editing, so I'm going to save this file. There is, in fact, one extra thing which I almost forgot to do. This I could have edited also directly in the MCU Expresso setup, but 
I'm going to edit this manually because it's too late now. I'm going to put 300 hex as start address for the ITC area. And of course, to compensate, take away 300 hex from its length. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to reserve 300 hex bytes at the beginning of this memory for use by uh, interrupt vectors. So now I can save this. Although not always absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do to make sure that everything is, is certainly as I want it. I'm going to go into the device system file and I'm going to modify the way that it works with the interrupt vectors. So I'm just going to do some uh, copy paste from another source that I have. So that's the change that I'm doing. So rather than just setting the vector table offset register to the location of the vectors in our program, what I'm doing instead is I'm going to copy them to the beginning of the ITC in this loop here. And I'm going to set the VTOR register to zero, which is the address of the start of the internal instruction memory. This will ensure that we have optimum performance and we could also then adjust the vectors at runtime if ever needed. So I think we're ready now. I'm just going to build it again. So going back to my workspace output directory, I find that we have several binary files which are being created. This one here is the one which MCU Expresso generated when it built the project. And the ones of interest today are the following. The one called ITC. Then we have one which is called AES25 encrypted. And this time we have a third output of interest. This one is called AES256 complete. And if you look at the size of it, you'll see that it's a lot larger than this approximately 170 kilobytes of um, example application which we'd like to see running. The reason is because it also has the complete microtask bootloader inside of it. This is intended for production programming so that in the production you just simply load one file to your board and it already contains all of the bootloader plus your initial application. So theoretically we've already converted and prepared our application to be uploaded to the board either as a standalone file with the bootloader and itself in it or we can just upload it to a board which already has the microtasker bootloader on it. Now I've already got the microtasker bootloader and a microtasker application running on this board so all I need to do is to switch it to its bootloader mode, connect its USB cable so that it appears as an external hard drive I delete the application which is presently loaded. I move to my workspace output directory and I do drag and drop of the encrypted application that we just created. And we have the original application operational again. However, this time the instructions are running exclusively from internal RAM, which means that they are operating at 600 megahertz. There are no delays to extract the instructions from the external QSPI flash anymore. So before terminating, I'd like to just do a quick overview to make sure that everything is clear how this is operating. What I have here is a diagram of the IMX RT1050 and its internal memory. Its internal memory is called Flex RAM and is constructed of three types of memory. We have this general purpose memory, which runs at a slower rate than the other two memories, which are data tightly coupled memory and instruction tightly coupled memory. These can be accessed with zero weight states and don't need to work with cache to get optimum performance. The application which we've been looking at also uses SD-RAM. It mainly uses this SD-RAM for its video buffers. Externally, we have a QSPI or HyperFlash component. This is connected via a serial interface and is used for storing the bootloader, including its fallback bootloader and its serial loader. 
Now what the bootloader has been used for is to load an encrypted version of our application which we've configured to run exclusively in ITC. We could do that because its size is small enough to fit into it. However, what the bootloader noticed when it started was that this was larger than the standard ITC size. So the first thing that it did was to configure the ITC memory by disabling the OC, which we don't need to use in this application, by making the DTC as large as possible and making the OTC just large enough to accept this program. That means that we have also optimum data tightly coupled memory, which means that we can store heap, stack and variables, which can also be accessed at optimal speeds. The application which we looked at, we didn't actually do any modifications for DTC memory and probably most of the variables are also operating in SD-RAM, which isn't optimal performance. But the main point of this video was to show how easy it is to use the Microtask bootloader to construct a program which operates then from the internal ITC. So what happens is that once the bootloader had configured the flex RAM, it then made a copy of the external code which was located in in the slower QSPI or HyperFlash and copied it to the ITC. And because it recognized that this was an encrypted version, it added the AES256 decryption during the copy. That means that the internal code is decrypted and can run at optimum speeds. Externally, one only has access to this encrypted version, which means that you have complete IP protection. Many thanks for watching this video, which has shown how we can take existing applications, secure them and make them uploadable with the Microtask bootloader so that they can run at optimum speeds directly in ITC RAM.